She's a Marxist. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris have faced each other on the debate stage for the first and possibly the last time. During their debate in Philadelphia on Tuesday, Trump and Harris made their case to the American people about why they should choose them over their opponent for the presidency. As part of the rules for the debate, each nominee's microphone was muted while their opponent answered questions from the moderators. And while they were unable to respond verbally in those moments, both nominees reacted with their faces to what they were hearing. Trump showed a wide, tight-lipped smile as Harris lobbed digs at him. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's a Marxist. Her father's a Marxist professor in economics, and he taught her well. But when you look at what she's done to our country, the values I bring to the importance of home ownership, knowing not everybody got handed $400 million on a silver platter and then filed bankruptcy six times, is a value that I bring to my work. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. Again, the Springfield city manager says there's no evidence of that. Vice we'll President Harris, out. I'll let you respond to the rest of what you've heard. <laughs> you talk about extreme. <laughs> people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. And the people that do go, she's busing them in and paying them to be there and then showing them in a different light. So she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. With what is known to be a dictator who would eat you for lunch. Vice President Harris, thank you. Lithuanian Interior Minister Agne Bilotait has announced that a nationwide mass evacuation plan will be developed by early October. Lithuanian public broadcaster LRT reported this, citing Bilotait. Bilotait believes that her country should now have a nationwide evacuation plan and be ready to implement it. Each local authority has its own evacuation plan, but obviously we must have a plan of a national scale and be ready to implement it, she said. The minister emphasized that the security of the population has become a priority due to cyber attacks and that civilian protection is now more important than ever. The war against Ukraine rages on. The countries of our region are subject to hybrid and disinformation attacks and sabotage is our new reality. It is important to note that we are at the forefront, so today civilian protection has become a priority, the official explained. She emphasized that strengthening civil protection at the national level alone is insufficient, leading to a decision to collaborate with other Baltic states. Additionally, the countries plan to seek funding from the European Union. We need to coordinate our efforts at the regional and European level. It is costly, but it is important to combine our capabilities and get support from the EU. We are calling for a risk assessment to better understand the threats and strengthen public protection measures, the minister said. Recall Russian drones have begun to crash on NATO territory. Lithuanian Foreign Minister Gabrielos Landsbergis believes that Russian drones have begun to crash on NATO territory due to the inaction of member states. Nothing should be landing on Ukraine or Latvia or anywhere on NATO territory, but this is the new reality our inaction has allowed to emerge. He added that Lithuania would, of course, be supporting a strong allied response. Recall the Romanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has protested the violation of the country's airspace by a Russian drone on the 8th of September. The Romanian Foreign Ministry expressed a strong protest against another violation of airspace that could have occurred during the Russian drone attack against Ukraine. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs urges to stop the repeated attacks on the Ukrainian population and civilian infrastructure, as well as the irresponsible escalation of the security situation by the Russian Federation, in particular on the border between Romania and Ukraine, it added. Latvia also stated that it had found a crashed Russian military drone in the east of the country and was conducting an investigation. Earlier, the German government developed a new contingency plan in the event of war amid the threat from Russia. The Russian troop group in the Seam River area of the Kursk region has no chance of holding this territory, Ukrainian military expert Pavel Narozny said on air at Radio NV. 
Our aviation and artillery are working very closely there. All the residents of Sumi write about the planes that are constantly moving towards the Kursk region. I think that this group has two options, either to swim across the river, which is technically possible. The seam is a small river, not the Dnieper, or to surrender. And this situation, it completely closes the flank. And this means that our group, which is in the Kursk region, it plans to hold out there for a long time, said Narozny. At the same time, he added that the Russian command is not ignoring the situation in the Kursk region and has already transferred there those troops that were supposed to be sent to the Pokrovsk direction. These are, of course, not very combat-ready units. However, they are standing, digging in and holding back the further advance of Ukrainian troops. It cannot be said that we are continuing the pressure there. However, even in the last two to three days, there has been progress. And if these units were not in the Kursk region, they would be either in Kharkiv region or in the Pokrovsk direction, added Narozny. According to him, most of the assault operations are currently taking place in the Pokrovsky direction, since the Russian Federation cannot yet conduct active combat operations in several places at the same time. Their peak of capability has already passed and it will continue to decrease. And the equipment and the number of people, it is also not easy to constantly replenish. The Kursk operation is already making its mark. The enemy does not have the resources to attack, to conduct a dense attack, which he is conducting in Pokrovsk in several directions. Our general staff reported three attempts to storm the Volchansk direction, but I am more than sure that they have been repelled and that we will counter-attack there. After all, the enemy has thrown back all, more or less, combat-ready units to the Kursk direction from Kharkov. Therefore, the fact that they are cutting the territory there, recapturing something, this is an absolutely logical step. Narozny explained,